What up folks, what up traders, what up investors, Ken here from Dyslexic Investor and we are going to break down Bill and Melinda Gates' stock portfolio. Uh, its value is currently around 17 to 18 billion dollars uh, and we're going to go through some of his top holdings. Uh, more in particular, going to be looking at some of his new holdings that he added the first quarter of 2020, uh, which is kind of strange strange because he kind of really heavily invested in a lot of tech stuff and we'll go through that in a second we're going to put this link down in the description below as well so you can click on that and check out the guru uh site it's a fantastic it has a lot of breakdowns and a lot of great uh people's portfolios and their f uh filings uh, they have to do on a quarterly basis so that being said let's go ahead and break it down what we have here uh Without a doubt, uh, is that if one doesn't know, this is Bill Gates. Uh, this is the same guy who got a speeding ticket in 1977 going speeding in his Porsche. Uh, I believe on a back road somewhere. I'm not 100% sure. And also, this is the same guy that a news anchor double dog dared him or whatever and he jumped over an office chair <laughs> while basically doing an interview it's just totally totally just gangster um anyway that being said again that's the bill gates just in case you didn't know him he actually uh, founded a, a lot of microsoft and is a billionaire and he does a lot of good for the world um anyways that being said we're just going to go ahead you came here for stocks you didn't come here about philosophy or uh philanthropy that being said, let's go ahead and jump into his biggest holding, which we have it uh, categorized as the largest weight, which is about a little over 47%. That's going to be in Berkshire Hathaway stock. Again, that's his best friend, Warren Buffett. They like to go to the movies together, have long walks on the beach, and have a nice steak dinner. Sometimes go to Mickey D's or Dairy Queen to get a nice milkshake. All right, next one, we're going to go through a couple of these ones. We're going to look at waste management. So we're going to go through a couple of these uh, larger, interesting ones that pop out at me. And then we're going to go looking at the charts. Uh, we've got waste management, a Canadian National Railway. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Uh, Walmart, we own that. Caterpillar, wonderful. Uh, Catlin Aretion's Ecolab, that's a great company. A lot of very well diversified. But then he owns uh, FedEx and UPS, basically around 2% each. Uh, and then some of his new holdings he added, which was new is apple amazon alibaba uh some other ones that kind of came out at me were he added alphabet and twitter uh and then that's basically some of his majority ones that really jumped out at me he owns some other smaller really the twitter one is like 0 0.04 percent of weight so these again these are just new holdings that he's just added and these are some of the ones that jumped out at me so let's go ahead and we'll switch over to the chart here and we're going to go jump through again uh berkshire hathaway so again uh we're going to do i think it's Ber he probably owns berkshire part b i think it said all right so this one again has a big has been kind of been slapped across the face uh, face a little bit due to warren buffett and he uh kind of going out and just saying that the economy is not going to recover very fast he's dumping all his airline stocks he's dumping all his bank stocks on what on god's green earth are you doing warren buffett what are you doing um, that being said, uh, doesn't mean that Berkshire Hathaway is going under. It's just Warren Buffett maybe just had uh, too many Coca-Colas that day or too much uh, McDonald's. Um, that being said, Berkshire Hathaway has been pretty uh, less uh, lagging behind a lot of the overall market, even due to its uh, surplus of uh, businesses that it's tied to. It owns so many diverse amount of businesses. You just Google it, what they own. They own everything from Dairy Queen to Geico. Uh, they own Seas Candy. It's just businesses that Warren Buffett and his buddy like. So basically, this is a bunch of, you can get a lot of free food, especially get Seas Candy. Have you had Seas Candies? Holy moly. I drove I drove past it when we went to LA one time and I was like, oh, oh my God, that's the Seas Candy factory. Definitely check it out. Great candy, old fashioned style candies. Um, that being said, oh, I'm getting super sidetracked. I totally apologize. Um, that being said, we are it failed at the 50% retracement, uh, then kind of sold off, uh, going breaking through the 21. Um, gonna be actually putting a target up here. This has to break this to get a bit above here, and then we can get rid of these lines. Um, it's tr it broke out above the 21 today because we had a hell of a day on trying to push the uh, 
averages higher. Uh, looking like it's trying to break out with the 5 and 8 exponential moving average trying to cross over. Again, kind of keep this on a short leash if you want to add it for long term. Um, I, no, again, no crystal ball here on what can happen, but that being said, just be very mindful at this. Um, I think this would be a safe bet to potentially start nibbling in this and creating a starter position for sure if you're into that. Uh, next one is waste management, which we actually purchased them today by we, I mean myself, myself and I uh, purchased some shares uh, slightly before uh, kind of start moving this morning, kind of gapped up. We purchased them around a little over, I think it was right on a hundred dollars, a hundred one something. I think we did it on one. Like it was like a hundred dollars and 15 cents. Um, gapping up. We kind of like this pattern. Um, it needs to break about basically their previous uh, kind of tippy top pattern here. It has been pretty beaten up due to the overall economy. People are just again sitting on their hands waiting to see what happens. Um, this has been a long term position for me. I really dove into it because the parabolic SAR has switched from the top going to the bottom, indicating for potential push higher. Uh, the 8 and 5 have crossed over and through the 21, which is also a great sign. It is in a super long squeeze here. Uh, potentially seeing it giving it some boost with that and the momentum and the volume oscillator coming above uh, into positive numbers for a nice push higher into the 102 to 105 frames. Uh, love, would love to see it back up here to 107 um, again, but I'm not going to ask too much out of it because it's waste management and they're pretty busy picking up trash. So we're just going to be super careful and mindful of that. Uh, next one is another W is W N. WMT, just we're just going to add a T at the end of it, which I still wanted to type it out because I feel special using all my fantastic Logitech gaming keyboard. That being said, uh, Walmart, whoo, this is a, uh, I don't even know what happened here. I remember we we, we were in this for some options where we're, we sold some puts around the 21, uh, like the 125, 124, and it popped off and went all the way up here and my puts just one morning just executed i'm like whoa that was <laughs> okay that was i'll take i'll take some money um and then it came right back down like it was super strange uh again that was due to earnings but it's just been kind of trading sideways and now it almost like looks like it's trying to potentially go lower um because the five and eight are kind of crossing through the 21 again um the parabolic sar is still on the bottom potentially giving it some support um if it breaks the 122 one yeah 120 122 uh could potentially head lower to its previous low to 120 and then potentially get down to the 200 which was around 117 118 um I'd like to see this higher due to the fact of a lot is one of the essential businesses that are currently open next is cat not the the, the they don't sell cats it's actually a caterpillar uh, and, and again they don't sell caterpillars it's a company that does a lot of to do with construction moving dirt from one place to another uh, basically it's a uh, a pulse of the economy if things are being built things are growing uh, and this company's getting a lot of money it's meaning that a lot of people are prosperous and they're able to put capital to risk to buy and to create things that being said with the huge gap up that we've had here before uh today is five and eight is crossing over the 21 trying to push higher this is kind of the similar uh, analysis that's going to be on waste management um it needs to kind of break out this previous high here at like 120 uh watching this again the parabolic SCR has was switched a couple days ago basically last week trying to print this higher as well volume oscillator is above zero which is fantastic looking for a push to like 124 125 potentially it has failed there before once uh with the overall v-shaped bottom as you may call it but now it's kind of making like a w or something uh to try to break above this uh overhead resistance again Keep it on a short lease unless you're investing in it. Be careful. It could go back to 108 to 110 potentially for a nice little nibble, nibble, nibble chicken dinner. Uh, next, we're going to go to Ecolab. So if you're not familiar with Ecolab, so I used to be a dishwasher when I was in high school and I hated it, but it created calluses on my hands and we had Ecolab supply all the soap, all the stuff. They have supplied the machine. They're basically the lifeblood of chemicals and different various uh industry things that are needed within businesses and so forth this thing has been performing fantastic and i have no idea why i haven't seen this before and why i didn't buy it when i was uh dishwashing in uh high school 
in early college. But again, that is well over 10 years ago. So that being said, it's a long time ago, and they're still pretty proper, uh, fl uh, pretty doing well in business. Uh, basically, hitting near all-time highs. We're like two or three dollars off. Better call it that. Um, again, we're going to have some strong uh, support on to the downside around 194, 195. So we're going to create that alert there. Um, upside potential again, we're going to have to break that 210-ish level. I kind of want to break this down on a larger time frame here. Let's go to uh, weekly. So this looks like it could be an all-time high. So I was in college in 06, 07, or high school. And yeah, it could have bought it $40, now it's a $200 stock. Anyways, you live and you learn. Um, so basically, it's trying to break out to all-time high, potentially. Uh, this, again, is basically the life pulse of the economy as well on what it offers and so forth. And a lot of restaurants are not able to buy these chemicals because they're not cleaning dishes and do so, so forth. But they can make chemicals to wipe things down. Got to get that Lysol stuff. Boy. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, I think I drank uh, a Coca-Cola. Warren Buffett, uh, Warren Buffett's uh, habits passed on me. I have been drinking a Coca-Cola in forever, and I drink a Coca-Cola to, to kind of get in the Warren Buffett uh, and uh, Bill Gates mindset. Um, that being said, now we're going to go to Apple. Again, this is one of his newer holdings. Um, this is less than 1% of his portfolio. Uh, again, with today, with the overall market just kind of getting to near all-time highs again, people are a little fearful and then selling out due to kind of collecting their profits that have happened the last month or and a half or so. Uh, Apple's still looking strong. Everyone I still see walking around with AirPods on. iPhone is going to probably be fantastic this year, hopefully with 5G. We don't know. Um, again, downward support around 303, 300. And then, of course, we need to break above the 326, 327 to see those potential new highs. Um, nothing too crazy. RSI is not falling out of the water. Uh, volume oscillator just been trading sideways, just kind of waiting for the probably the economy to open back up. Uh, next one here, also a new holding, is Amazon. And, of course, this one has been a beast due to the overall downtrend of the economy and closing of a lot of things. Um, you can kind of see here, basically since the uh, uh, beginning of April, has just been riding up the 5 and 8 exponential moving average, kind of bouncing around. Had a little hiccups here around earnings. The 21 came in for support, thank the Lord, uh, and it just kind of held this on the way up, potentially looking for the 21 for some more support. So we're going to actually move this up to the 2382, call it. And, of course, we need a breakout to all-time highs to see uh, potentially looking here. Um, still showing the potential support. It could tap the 21. Um, but if the 5 and 8 are crossing through the 21, we could be seeing some potential downside in the short term. Uh, let's see what's next on the board. Alibaba. BA. BA. Um, this thing had a pretty, I want to say, significant bounce. So this is actually one we did a dive on with uh, the CEO of Barcel Sports uh, was lost a pretty large position on this, holding it over earnings. Um, I'm not sure. I think his cost average was around 202, so he potentially could have got out today with a profit. I'm not sure if he did. I haven't checked Twitter on that. Um, with this is again a lot to tie to uh, uh, various political issues and if this company is legit in that sense. That being said, this kind of breaks down to the same extent. It hasn't broken above 208 and has not shown the support basically is at 195 because we've seen support multiple times around the 200 exponential moving average. Um, and then we're going to do Google and then we're going to do Twitter and then we're going to call it a day, boys and girls. So actually I bought an alphabet, uh, both of them. He bought in Goog, G-O-O-G, -O -O and then G-O-O-G-L. Uh, both leave the same thing. They're A and B class, whatever. Same thing. Uh, that being said here, we are looking for, this has kind of been a lagger. So I kind of like this one, actually. And I've said this probably multiple times on the thing, on me talking about this. It broke through the 78.6 percentile move, which we kind of wanted to because we had the... Uh, a failure here and kind of a oopsie here, but with the overall momentum kind of kicked it higher. Um, again, this is great. 
uh, we don't want it to come down to the 21 um, but the 21 and then the 618 percentual uh, move here is going to come in for support so basically anywhere from 1330 to 1350 again this is a not a it's a very highly priced stock like an amazon stock well over a thousand dollars a share so be mindful of that and be very careful um, especially because this thing can move if it starts decides to go down um, that being said we're looking for an all-time high because there isn't going to be that much uh, of a fib cluster that we could look at in between here to 100 percent so again, we're going to be looking at like the 1500 level is going to be pretty keen here as well. If it can break above this, uh, it's also going to be a great sign for a potential move higher. Um, but looking here at it holding around the 1420 level uh, and trading sideways to potentially kick off the market with a high. And then his one of his smallest positions, which is at 0.04% is the Jack Dorsey Twitter uh, account and this one it had a pop off today we kind of said that the exponential moving average the 200 day here has been a, a lot of overhead resistance it kind of broke above that you can see here the 5 8 and 21 exponential moving ends have been nicely stacked the parabolic SARs are below this is a nice little sign for potential again ongoing uh, momentum um, that being said, if the RSI starts getting overextended and start getting into 80-ish level, we could be seeing a potential pullback. So a pullback could be easily come back to the $32 level uh, for it to test that again. And we're going to be looking at a preset at around 36 potentially uh, that it could trigger that RSI level um, because the volume oscillator has been kicking off quite a bit. I'm um, looking at this on a weekly chart. Again, we've like we said, this has been trading in a range for quite some time. It hasn't been that much growth behind it. Um, potentially to see what happens um, going forth. Just on the weekly chart, the RSI has switched, which is a good sig signal uh, for potentially further upside. Again, looking for 36.70. Um, if it comes back down, we need to be very careful because it could easily break through a couple key levels uh, on the weekly chart the five and eight are starting to try to cross over the 21 is another great sign um, that being said they're going to leave it at that if there's anything else please put in the comments down below i greatly appreciate it everyone don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you love me if you don't love me hit the like and subscribe and if you learn something hit the like and subscribe again this is ken from the dyslexic investor and i'll catch you guys on the flip side peace